Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, it's time for yet another update for the Supernote. And while this is a beta, by the time that you actually see this video, this should be out of beta. And I think that the official nomenclature should be 2.6.22, not entirely sure. But once it is out, I will update the title of the video so that it corresponds to the correct version. So just don't be confused by the version that you see here. It is a beta version, but uh, the official one should bring you pretty much the same stuff that you'll see here and uh, yeah there's some really really cool stuff to see here but before we go there I just want to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy the content that I bring to you guys and also the independence is one of the key things about the uh, my deep guide and uh, your support really helps a ton and if you do want to help even further then please do check out the mydeepguide.com shop where you can find the my daily organizer product which is a high hyperlinked PDF file carefully designed to satisfy all of your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, professional or personal needs. And it's something that's helping thousands of users worldwide, worldwide um, in, in all sorts of different professions. So check out also the link in the description below for the MDO playlist, My Daily Organizer playlist, where you will find a ton of really useful videos that are going to be able to show you whether the MDO 2020 is the right product for you or not. And now onwards with yet another impressive update for the Supernote. All right, here we are and hot on the heels of an extremely exciting release 2.6, we or 2.6 Two, I believe it was. This is now 2.6.22. Uh, and here says that it's 2.722 because it's a beta, so it's not officially released yet. It's still in beta, but probably by the time you actually see this video, this should already have released or is uh, rolling out to the users. Now, why is this uh, uh, exciting? Well, for many, many reasons. I mean, as if the previous release was not enough with with the handwriting recognition and previous one with the links and all of the things like so many things already done but here we get really exciting stuff actually added and yes there are only two major things that have been added but both of them are incredibly good and very exciting for me the first one might not apply to everyone but it most definitely applies to me and that is the fact that now in the synchronization you also can choose to use google drive and when you actually go to the google drive select folders option you simply select which of the folders you want to synchronize and then in the uh, Google Drive, you will get a Supernote folder with these folders corresponding. And then it all is synchronized by simply swiping down and tapping on the cloud icon. The synchronization speed is a little bit slower than with the Supernote cloud, but this is actually just kind of uh, allowing you to localize all of your stuff. And actually, when you combine this with the video when I was talking about previously how to on the Supernote, that you can export the dot not note and dot mark files uh, that that you can save and back up your uh, native format files locally offline or on this case on Google Drive or uh, yeah, anything else. That's uh, a huge amount of power and a huge amount of freedom that we can see from a company like Rata, not forcing you to use uh, their own cloud if you don't want to. It's there for you if you want it to. It's, it, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, you can use, store it locally. You, you can do <laughs> whatever you want. And most definitely, you don't need any kind of subscription. So that's a very, very exciting thing to see. And I really, really love it. And that one actually transforms the usability of the Supernote even further for me. And it's now pushing it even further to actually actively become my main driver, which is something that I couldn't do for a longer period of time, simply because some of the functionalities were not there. But right now, it's offering so many things that it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very hard to ignore the functionalities and the power that the Supernote is bringing. And that power is further being improved 
by a new icon right here. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have screen sharing, mirroring, casting, whatever you want to call it on the Supernote platform. So let's check that out and show you how that works. All right, screen casting with the Supernote could not be easier. There's only one prerequisite, and that is that the Supernote and that the device that you are casting to need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. That's it, nothing else. So I have to first make sure that I am connected on a Wi-Fi network. Yes, I am. And then I can just tap this icon here and it's going to give you your own IP. This IP is going to be different on each of the devices. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You just open up a browser, type in the IP, including the port and hit enter on the browser and then it just works. But you can simultaneously cast on many different devices. So I'm just going to set up like a smorgasbord of devices here and screen capture the PC as well so that you can see how it all works and it's going to be synchronized so that you can see in real time how the latency is and how the performance is. All right, so here is the setup. Uh, this is the super note where I'm going to be writing and I am simultaneously now using the screen sharing option on my phone, the iPad Air, the Books Ultra, my Lenovo tablet, and on my desktop PC. And this is... All right, so this is definitely overloading it. This is too much for it because it's not able to get there. But if I do refresh, what are we going to get out of these guys? Is it going to be the last one that's refreshed? Or how will this work? Okay, so now I have two of the last ones. Let's try and see. So, so far I'm able to cast to two devices, not there. So let's refresh the desktop and let's refresh only the Lenovo here. Is that how it works? Seems to be yes. So if I add a third one, let's see, refresh refresh there yes so we do have a limit of casting to two devices you can't do the smorgasbord <laughs> of devices here and if you do want to do a smorgasbord of devices then just remember that you activate them by refreshing so i can get a control so for example if i refresh you and you uh i should be casting to the phone and the tab ultra and I am and then if I want to I can just refresh my desktop or desktop can be your zoom call then you share that uh, window with the zoom call or whatever it may be uh, projector or anything like that and it just works really really well so um how does it uh handle all of these things yes you actually get all of this stuff let's see my real-time recognition that was another thing that we're testing but let's see let's open up uh huh. Yeah, it's, it's, this is what I was testing, so that's why it's there. But yeah, you open it up and this is the older one. So let's swipe pages. Yes, you can swipe pages here. Let's find a different document with more content here. So uh, let's go into documents and you get to, to see all of the navigations as well, which is really cool. So let's go into test documents and uh, yeah tolerance of tardigrades yes there we go thank you he's actually 
helping me with the uh, 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 review uh, thing because, oops, I pressed the power button. But yeah, when you actually go into landscape format, you can definitely have a full screen and then share all of this. So for a lecture, this is a really, really, oops, I'm erasing, really cool thing because it's uh you you're it's just so freaking cool i really like it yes you can't do unlimited devices you can do casting to two devices at the same time and you absolutely have to be aware of it that this is not a secure connection so do not under any circumstances do this on a public network this is something that you will never, ever, you should never, ever do on a public Wi-Fi. Instead, make a hotspot on your smart device of any kind, iPad or your iPhone, um, if, it's, if your uh, tablet is uh, 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 network capable, and then hook up your devices to the hotspot, and then you can nice and securely kind of cast, because that hotspot is a lot more secure um, than a public Wi-Fi. But this is pretty, pretty freaking cool. So I can highlight here and that actually works pretty much immediately. I don't think we have an option to have a landscape notebook. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. But yes, the documents themselves are actually uh, casting normally and it's like really, really useful, especially for the academics and uh, yeah, uh, presentations and things like that. Very, very powerful feature here, especially because you can cast to two different devices. So, for example, why would what's the real application of this? Let's say that you are casting to a laptop that is then also streaming that you're in a convention and you have a presentation and you're casting from this to your laptop or this device which is also using a zoom and then it's also streaming that online but at the same time you want to cast to uh, uh, a different, uh, to a projector as well, or something like that, or a different room if you wanted to, for whatever reason, you do have that possibility as well. So it's something that's uh, very, very powerful and um, super easy to use. Uh, I, I've never had a field connection and it never just drops out or anything like that, it just, works and it's something that i really really do appreciate quite a lot and it's seamless everything works everything is casted so that's something that i really really like and uh, a really welcome addition to an already powerful platform it's now getting to be even more powerful so pretty pretty freaking sweet Another thing that's been added in this update is that when you are actually exporting uh, your uh, converted recognition, you have an option to actually export original formatting. So let's go maybe this and then go export. And you can choose to use original format or to reformat the wording. So what does that mean? Well, this is considered the original formatting, right? And it would look like something like this so let's get to I've already exported it so I think that it's much easier to get it that way let's just find it there we go so the original export text file looks like this and it has a second page I believe or no everything is in there okay so just one page and when you choose reformat option the same thing then it reformats it like this, justifies it and all the stuff like that. So much, much easier and much, much, much more usable. And it works for text and a word file if you're exporting as a text or a word file. Again, really, really cool stuff to see. And there's also a handful of adjustments, optimizations and fixes, such as deleted the page count display underneath the thumbnail pages when in overview, uh, fixed keywords being lost after page containing a keyword was deleted, uh, 
uh, two finger eraser gesture bug that would block activation of subsequent tools is also fixed. It's basically if you started it and then you ended up away from the device, it would block, sometimes block activation of the next device. That's also fixed now. No, next tool, sorry. And then fix the long press on a page in the overview and the stars view uh, in the navigation. Sometimes it would fail to work. That's apparently also been fixed here. Well, alrighty then. <laughs> I mean, uh, Supernote joins the uh, 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 ranking of devices that are able to screen share as well or screen cast. And it does it in a very simple and uh, easily usable manner that's super flexible and it just works. So here's the thing why I really like this. Because it works and it's super simple and it just works really good. So with the books, I always, always have issues with the built-in screencasting. I can never get it to work. That's why I have to resort to other apps and things like that. And then it works fine and then it's all good. With the Remarkable, you have to have a separate app. So you have to have a separate app to do screen sharing and things like that. With this one, you do the screen share like I showed you. The addition that you can actually simultaneously uh, stream or screencast to two separate devices at the same time is also incredibly useful. The additional thing is also the Google Drive. I know this is not going to be uh, applicable to everyone. So far we have Dropbox and Google Drive and I know that one drive is incoming on their roadmap. And then you're going to have the same synchronization settings and the options that I've actually shown you on either of the three, which again further solidifies and uh, kind of makes this a really, really usable and an impressive platform. Again, easy to use, yet so, so powerful. Yet another excellent update. They are just on a roll and it's just impressive to see that well over two years of this device and it just gets more, more life brought into it and it just remains current, which is a really, really lovely thing to see. And I'm pretty happy that actually more people are discovering why the Supernote A5X is different, why it is powerful, why you should actually consider it. Despite it not having a front light, despite it not having uh, a Google Play Store and things like that. I mean, if you want those things, you got books. That That's perfect for you. There's like a huge range of devices, excellent devices to choose from. But if that's not what you're looking for and the Remarkable is not really floating your boat for uh, yeah limitations, yes, it is more expensive. Yes, it doesn't feel like a paper or anything like that. So it has its quirks. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit doing things on its own. But what it does, it does really, really well. So it's nice to see that people are discovering the true value of the Supernote A5X and the A6X as well. I hope that you liked the video and that you found it informative. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think about the update here. Do you find the screencast uh, solution uh, intuitive? Do you find it that it's something that you might be using or useful for your use case scenario or something like that? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Yeah, your opinions, your thoughts about the new update and features featured here. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.